So congratulations to all of you who are better than I would be and have been here. So to reward you for that, this morning's talk is just meant to be some light-hearted entertainment, looking at some years of the Linux desktop. Um, it's just a bit of fun. If anything, it's meant to inspire another 20 Hack Week projects. There's, I, I'll say 40 because there's about 20 people in the room. There might be some people online. We need to all at least come away with two new Hack Week projects because in the process of writing this talk, I've come away with at least five. So this is me. I'm from Adelaide, Australia. That's why you can't understand my English. Um, I've been using Linux for ages, OpenSUSE for slightly less ages. Um, and yeah, so the whole idea of this talk is the concept of form versus function. So lots of people like form, but I've found if you use the same desktop every day, all day, you know the button at the top right hand corner is a close button. You don't need an intuitive UI to tell you that. So I like to think a bit more in the form over the purely functional, just for a bit of fun. And so this talk is all about things that do the function really well at the sacrifice of the form. So starting in the early 90s, the late 80s, I want to give a shout out to the chipware, the demo scene that existed back then. It is not something that I have done enough research on to do any justice of in this talk. So someone else should write that talk and present it next year. And I'll acknowledge that it happened and it's really the starting point. And from there, um, we will keep going to what we have here is a video game UI from the 90s. Now, there is a guy who I've spoken to many times online called Rasta, who started the Enlightenment desktop. And his thought and philosophy was, if video games can have cool UIs like this, why can't normal desktops have cool UIs like this? Why do they have to be boring and Windows 95 looking? Which is what they were all at the same time. So here is some more examples. This is Jazz Jackrabbit. It was an awesome game of my childhood, but you get the idea, why can't we have some crazy ideas? So he went away and created this thing called Enlightenment, um, E16. Now, thanks to the joys of open source, Enlightenment, which was first, I think E13 was released in 2019, yeah, sorry, in 1999, when I was still in primary school. But there is still a package in OpenSUSE. We can still run it. So we get to have some fun with a live demo. And even better than that, there is this website at the top, which has about 160 old themes that someone has put together for our enjoyment this morning. Um, then this second command is how I'm actually doing this. So it's creating a virtual X11 server inside my X11 server, and then we can run E16. And here is some themes we'll look at, maybe. But here is E16, or this has the E13 theme. Um, you can see we have these, it's pretty small, but you can see we have these cool window borders. And everything looks FUD. And so we have a bunch of themes here. Um, 23 ounces of glass. You'll have to ignore the fact that I don't have it configured properly. But so look how cool these UIs are. And we can have more. Um, what was the next one? Yeah, um, I can't read the screen. That's all right, we're picking, we're jumping ahead and we're gonna pick some random ones because I can't read the screen. But anyway, the point is, back at this period of time, we had Windows 98 and Windows 98 UIs while in Linux, you could have these cool fancy things and that was fun and we've gone somewhat backwards from there, I think. So let's have a look through a few more. Um, 
my computer's not letting me mirror my display. Um, sometimes the most fun way is just to go randomly through, which I guess kind of brings me on to my first Hack Week project for next Hack Week, which is creating a way to bring all these themes back to life on a more modern, slightly more usable desktop. Not that this desktop isn't unusable. We can have an X term if we want. Oh, the window border is at the bottom. That is a novel concept. And the buttons are down here. Um, so yeah. Let me, we go back to our slide for a second. Inferno. All right, let's go have a look at. Um, I can't read the screen over there. Let's have a look. Where is Inferno? This is a well. This is a really well organised talk. Ah, the text doesn't even render on this projector properly, but now I can see it. Here is Inferno. Ah, yeah, this is a good one. Why have boring rectangular window borders when you can have this? <laughs> and so I must say, I gave this talk at Linux.conf.au a few years ago, and at that time, I had no idea that B3-E or whatever this is stood for mad cow disease. But when you have a look at this theme, it's going to make a lot of sense for you. So here is the mad cow disease theme. Isn't that the greatest menu you've ever seen? Why do we not have more menus like this? It gets <laughs> even better. <laughs> Hey, but on the plus side, I can actually read the text of this menu. And so, yeah, this is E16. Um, this is a theme that crashes enlightenment, and we're going to ignore it. Uh, but let's not try the theme that crashes it. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is E16, and... So you can see here, this one's a little bit more normal, but still fun. And so I'd like to bring a lot of this stuff back and because I think it was cool and I don't think we do it well enough anymore. Um, so once we come on from E16, and of course, all of that you can download and mess around with in your own time. I package it, it works. We come to the 2000s. Um, this is when I started using Linux a lot. By the end of the 2000s, I'm pretty sure I had a desktop that looked something like this, which I really liked for a completely different set of reasons. I had a cool, cool aesthetic and all that. We also started to see compies come around because computers have GPUs, so why don't we use GPUs to render desktops? And that is great. Um, compies also still works on um, OpenSUSE with XFCE. I am not game enough to log out and swap to XFCE to run Compiz to do a Compiz demo. Um, at one point I pre-recorded one, but I lost it. So instead, without the pretty, without the pretty um, theme, there is now Wayfire, which aims to bring, which when I started writing this talk a couple of years ago, this didn't really exist well yet. And so I'm glad it now does because it starts to bring the everything that was cool about Compiz to Wayland. Um, when you have keyboard shortcuts inside keyboard shortcuts, not everything always works. Um, 
my fingers don't tie up this early in the morning. So for those of you that have used Compiz, you can see here we've got all the same old modules that they used to have. We should have some wobbly windows. There we are. The world's least needed window feature ever. <laughs> but again, that is the point of this talk. It is fun. It is cool. No one, no one else's computer can do that. That's something you can only do in Linux. Um, so beyond the um, cool features that introduced, for me personally, something it introduced that I still use is the 4x4 grid of virtual desktops, which you can see I have here in alignment. So coming in with the, all the fancy animation effects, they did add some useful things. And unfortunately, GNOME and KDE have long since taken those useful things and left all the fun things, like painting with fire on your screen, behind for a far distant memory. Um, so there is a desktop cube here, but the keyboard shortcuts are fighting each other. And so I don't think we're getting a desktop top cube this morning, unfortunately. But anyway, this is, this is Wayfire. If you want Compiz, but you like Wayland, that is for you. If you like Compiz and old stuff, XFCE, install the Compiz packages. You'll be great. Um, and somewhere here, I have some slides. Ah, here is. This was, is a screenshot of my personal desktop I found from like 2009. We have the funky clock widgets and CPU monitors and all kinds of cool stuff you used to be able to do. And for me, yep, some more themes. And for me, this is one of, I think we've only gone backwards from here, but I'll leave that to the end. And so then, after the 2000s, naturally, we come to the 2010s. And in the 2010s, unfortunately, in the Linux world, people stopped doing as much cool, fun stuff. Everyone decided we should have tablet interfaces. Everything should look slick and polished, which for some people, that's great. But there wasn't as many fun things and fun themes and fun designs. And so for this part of the talk, I've had to do a kind of sidestep and instead, we're looking at Android, where at least on Samsung, I can download a bunch of random cool themes for my phone, such as these ones. Because gold cogs, who wouldn't want it? It's great. It's different. It's unique. But it's not Linux. Now, I've kind of gone through a year group by year group by year group. but. Now I've got a few special mentions because one thing that's been consistent throughout those times um, is the usage of popular culture to make random obscure things. Or even in the case of Hannah Montana OS, an entire operating system dedicated to popular culture because we can. Um, it's a, quite a reasonable thing to want. So, if I fire up a terminal here, and then sorry, sorry everyone, as part of this being the first talk of the day, and me equally not being good at first talks, I haven't spent an hour setting up my laptop for this talk yet. Is that even bigger? But you can see here we have a Pikachu. He's great if we make a, uh, not that, he'll follow my chaos around. If we make a bell character go off, he jumps up and makes some lightning. Um, and we get this cool yellow. But if Pikachu, if Pikachu is not your thing, thing, then we can have a nine cap because because this is exactly what you want to happen coming across your screen while you're typing. 
and we have some beautiful rainbow selections. <laughs> um, all right, now, this is either going to work fantastically or it's going to crash my laptop, but this is an animated wallpaper that's been around for the best part of, uh, that's the wrong box, the best part of 10 years. So you have to think when everyone was using Windows XP, if you used Enlightenment, you could have this fantastic animated wallpaper. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want a Star Destroyer flying across? These are assets out of an old Star Wars game that someone has turned into an animated wallpaper. And at some point, that Star Destroyer will come back again. And we'll just leave this running because this used to run 100% of your CPU, which is also exactly what you want from a wallpaper. These days, it's a little bit better. Oh, we only, we only get it on that window. That's a bit of a shame. Um, and so, because I maintain lots of things in this area, because this is obviously an area I care about, um, I forgot I put this slide in, but it's here. So we're going to, and we have, yeah, we've got time. So I'm going to talk about these things quickly. So there's the Conkey system monitor. If you want cool looking graphs and stuff like that, um, there's the variety wallpaper changer, which allows you to download wallpapers off the internet and change them every 10 minutes. It's what I tend to do normally because I get sick of looking at the same thing every time. Um, uh, I have to remember where things are. And that's hard at this hour of the morning. Uh, Hang on, I should be sensible. If I type Conkey in my search history, that's where I wanted to go. Um, yes, this cursor is as hard to figure out what you're doing as it looks like it would be. Now, if we start up Conkey, hopefully here, Oh, we're not getting the wallpaper. This should have a nice bar background. But maybe if I restart. Conky can be a little bit temperamental. Um, if you use the same... If you have the same screen set up every day, it works well. If you try to run it on a... Uh, I'm going to give up on that terminal. Let's have another one. If you try and run it connected to a projector, when you've never run it connected to a projector, you might have some issues. Right, there we are. Now we have a bar. The fonts are wrong, but you kind of get the idea. This is the wrong resolution. There'll be... We get a list of processes. We have these nice curly graphs telling me how much of my disk space I've used. Um, somewhere over there will appear a massive CPU graph after about five minutes. And so Conk is fun for doing things like that. Um, and to finish up, I thought I'd look through a few screenshots of various things that I could see people are still doing into the future to give you some inspiration for the kind of things you can do. Oh, here you go. Here's a nice example of Conky. That's what it normally, what normally does. Um, this is a Linux Mint install using, I presume, some sort of lightweight desktop. Um, this is uh, Enlightenment running by old OpenSUSE theme. As you can see, over here I have cleverly integrated cog key as an extra leaf sort of thing because some days you don't want to do real work 
Yeah, that's more exciting. Um, if you press the back button, you get the last slide instead of the next slide. <laughs> um, hang on. Sorry. Those slides there was a three-slide summary of my talk from Thursday. So go watch that one since it's online. This theme here is an alignment theme called Fireball. This is another one of my Hack Week projects. I'm slowly porting this to work with a new version of Enlightenment. If the themes we saw at the start were from 2000, this is around the 2008, 2009 era. Um, and then this is another one. This is called Grunge. This is the theme that really inspired this talk for me and took it in the direction, well, why can't a theme not just be a theme but an interactive work of art? And so I thought that was really cool and that this theme kind of inspired this whole talk and I am very slowly working on making it usable again. That was my goal for this year's talk to have it working, but I ran out of time because I foolishly accepted two talks and Doug foolishly accepted both of them and now we're here. Um, so soon you'll be able to see this and use this. This is the grunge theme. Um, I'm pressing wrong buttons again. Here we have something I got off res Reddit. Ah, the title tells me it's Fluxbox. But it's another cool modern way you can make your desktop look if you want. Kind of like this one as well. And here's a fairly minimal arch that still looks unique and cool. Here we have some form of tiling window manager. People who use tiling window managers are crazy, but you're great. Um, and another one, and another one. So there's lots of things you can do to suit your taste, your style. They're unique. Um, that is the last slide. So if anyone wants, we can have a look at it. Can anyone read this list of themes and would like to try something? Can I what? Can I increase it? No, I can't. This is early 2000s technology. They don't know how to do that. I can read Moon, so. Not sure how we get Moon here, but I do still like. Uh, the menu looks like the Moon. Um, CDE, because as well as being cool and crazy, you have to be able to be boring as well. So. Is a CDE theme. And yeah, anyway, well, that is my talk. Thank you all for coming. I hope it was slightly entertaining and worth getting up this early in the morning. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. <laughs> is there any questions? I'm not sure this is the kind of talk where you can have questions, but if someone has, you can surprise me. Thanks, everyone.